section. Comments or testimony on agenda items listed under public hearing, public comment will be taken at that time. Roll call, please. Dick Anderson. Here. Judy Casper. Here. Don Williams. Here. Kip Ward. Here. Deanna Hinton. Here. Riley Hoagland. Here. Would you please all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you again so much. Okay. We're going to jump right into the consent agenda. We have minutes of the meeting March 27th, 2017, minutes of work session meeting for March 6th, 2017, minutes of work session meeting on February 6th, 2017, minutes of meeting on January 23rd, 2017, and minutes of meeting on January 18th, 2017. I move to approve the uh, consent agenda one through five. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. All right, we are at comments from citizens present on agenda, non agenda items. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to bring to the council's attention any item not listed on the agenda for public hearing or public comment. Comments are limited to five minutes per citizen, and the city recorder will use the light system. Speakers may not yield their time to others, and as a general rule, this is not a time for exchange of questions. At the conclusion of this agenda item, a councilor may discuss or raise questions regarding an item presented by a citizen. The mayor has the authority to reduce the time allowed for comment in accordance with the number of persons present and signed up to speak. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Let's see. Okay, so let's start out with uh, Rex Capri. Did I get that right? Okay. So again, if, uh, when you come forward and choose any chair you want, just state your name for the record. Don't need your address or anything else. And just stay close to the microphone. If you see me motioning you, you got to get a little closer. Okay. My name is Rex Capri. I'm from uh, uh, 255 Northwest 17th Street in Newport. And I'm here tonight to speak on uh, ballot measure number 21-177. I've uh, given each of you a copy of the voters pamphlet that's coming up on the May 16th election. I just want to state, first of all, that I'm opposed to this measure, and I want to uh, go over some reasons why. First of all, uh, this measure is listed as uh, uh, to ban aerial spraying and uh, to create rights for natural communities and ecosystems. Um, I think uh, this measure is very poorly written, vaguely written, especially on the aerial spraying part. It, uh, it doesn't uh, specifically explain what aerial spraying is. I'm a commercial fisherman. I have been for 48 years. And uh, we're reading into this measure that uh, this could possibly affect the fishing industry too because, because of the lack of uh, definition of aerial spraying. And uh, uh, there's a new boatyard uh, over in Toledo that just put in a lot, uh, large travel lift for bigger fishing vessels to haul out and do maintenance work. Uh, one of the things we always do when we haul out is uh, repaint the bottom. The bottom paint on boats contains algicides and molluscicides to prevent growth on the bottom of the boats. Um, the spraying on these bigger vessels, because the hulls are so big, uh, requires that it's done out of a out of a man lift. It's too high to do from the ground, so uh, it could easily be interpreted as aerial spraying, uh, because of the lack of a, a definitive definition in this measure here, and uh, it does because in under pesticides their definition on the, the ordinance language, they do list uh, quite a number of different herbicides, pesticides, uh, viricides even. Uh, that's another concern there too, is that uh, even the county wouldn't be able to, according to this, wouldn't be able to spray in case of an outbreak of something like a Zika virus or West Nile virus because uh, aerial spraying and the pesticides that they list in this. So there's a lot of uh, different industries that have concern here besides the timber industry, the agriculture, uh, the commercial uh, pest uh, control people. You know, this bill 
poorly written, and it really didn't have to be that way. Uh, these people knew that they were specifically targeting aerial spraying of uh, timberlands. They could have fine-tuned this language to specifically specify what that aerial spraying was. Because it doesn't, I think it can have some serious unintended consequences for our county and all the, all the cities in this county. So I would just ask that uh, all of you on the council here, you would please just read the measure. And even more importantly, if you would read the text of the ordinance, which is what the law would state if this measure were to pass. And I think if, if you do that personally and objectively, you'll easily see some of the issues that can, uh, can develop from this. So I would just ask you at this time to, to please, you know, and, and also all, all voters in the county, if they would do the same, you know, take it personally as an individual, read this and make up your own mind on this issue, but read it carefully, read it through and interpret it for yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming forward. Uh, Joe Steer. And again, folks, we don't need your addresses. If you want to give them to us, feel free. I'll let the wife tell you where I live. Depends what I do tonight for where I live or where I live. <laughs> if I could have you. My name is Joe Steer. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a resident of Lincoln City, but I'm a Joe, resident. can I get you to pull that microphone a little bit? Closer to you. There you go. Perfect. My name is Joe Steer. I'm not a resident of Lincoln City, but uh, I am a close by resident. I've always utilized this town, of course, for my groceries and hardware and stuff like that. So, And you guys, as elected officials, do have an influence in this area and even an area around it. So it's, it's part of your responsibility. Uh, farmer, forester, and I have been a fisherman. But. Uh, on this measure, the front page, you read it, and it states how it's against aerial spraying in the forest. I would be a strong advocate of keeping that tool in forestry. I mean, I use it all the time. I love to answer questions. But the front page is mainly fluff. If you really get into this measure, you look at what's going on, and it talks about corporations. Well, that's any business entity, and then it mentions all these public entities also that would be covered. And then it mentions aerial spraying, and it's defined as physical deposition. Let's let the lawyers and judges worry about what that actually means. Uh, so I started looking into it, and there's an East Coast group that actually wrote this. This is kind of boilerplate off of what they do. And this group uh, actually has made quite a bit of money when counties or municipalities have either not passed this ordinance talking about the ecosystems and talking about community rights they like to go in there and just start lawsuits so that's uh, something to worry about so what they do is they take something that uh, some of the locals around here are not really in favor of pesticides in the forest or on farms or in the fishing industry so they appeal to those sentiments and that's how they get this going and, and uh, that's, that's what I believe on that. Uh, the direct action part, you know, this county has had direct action before, even though it was illegal. In the late 70s, early 80s, we had quite a bit of uh, direct action taking place in the woods that had to do with the anti-herbicide uh, folks at that time. And there were public employees of the county that were actually even shot at because they thought they were applying herbicides. So. That direct action part is very scary in my mind, and to actually make that legal is, uh, well, it's illegal to make it legal, but who knows. It's, it's just a, it's just gonna be in the courts. It's gonna be a problem. And that's why I'm appealing to you as elected officials. I would much rather have an elected official making some decision, because at least I have a recourse on if I don't like your decision, than some unelected out of county reps calling themselves community right folks coming in and suing for this or suing for that. So that's my statement. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate you coming forward. Uh, and I'm sorry, is it Tom or Tim Miller?
Thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm Tim Miller. I'm the president of the Lincoln County Farm Bureau. Uh, you want my address? My address is three. No, okay. Uh, yeah, maybe pull that mic a little bit closer, Tim. Grab it. Pull it forward. Beautiful. Thank you. There we go. Uh, third generation farmer timber owner in the Sluts Valley. Uh, We've been there for about 110 years now. Uh, I do everything uh, in uh, integrated pest management. Uh, I don't spray unless I have to. Uh, but this um, measure uh, would make me not be able to spray to in control invasive species on my property. Uh, there's three things that I really dislike about the measure and I think everybody should dislike about the measure. Number one is defining aerial spraying as by an aerial method. It's been, aerial method has been defined by everything from Webster's uh, definition of aerial putting into the air to spraying by aircraft. Nobody knows what that means, not even the people that are organizing this. I went to one of their first meetings and asked them what that meant. And they said, well, if your feet are on the ground, you're not aerial spraying. I says, well, if I'm on my tractor, well, that would be aerial spraying. Now they say aerial spraying is only from a helicopter. These are the people that are putting forth this. They don't even know what it means. And this measure will allow people, anybody, it says people, doesn't say residents of Lincoln County, that if you don't like or don't think the county is doing, is enforcing the measure like you think it should be enforced, you can take direct action. Again, direct action is not Identified. They don't say what direct action is. Is that a lawsuit? Is that trespass? Is that demonstration? So, this was, will that allow people to come on my property to to see if I've been spraying or not? With that, and this gives them immunity from prosecution. I asked Sir Sheriff Landers. Uh, you know, what would he do? And he says, well, he really couldn't, wouldn't be able to help me if this measure passed. The third thing is the giving uh, the rights to ecosystems, plants, rocks, trees, and gives somebody the right to sue for those trees and what would that do if you wanted to develop a piece of property build a road cut a tree down then somebody could sue you for cutting the tree down and make you put it back the road back to where it was before you started these are serious things that I think all voters should read this measure very carefully and if you don't understand it which I don't think anybody understands it you need to vote no on that and I would ask the, you as the councilman and mayor of Lincoln City to endorse a no vote like uh, the county commissioners have, the sheriff Landers has, the city of Newport, the ports of Newport, and Toledo. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming forward. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm going to murder this. It's, it's Bria or Bray? Uh, Bree Walters. Bree, thank you. Yeah, and um, unfortunately, Sh Sheriff Curtis Landers couldn't make it tonight, and so I've been authorized to read his voters' pamphlet statement for all of you tonight. So that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> and then I, I also have a copy that I'll pass out to you at the end. Um, so it starts out: Public Safety Notice about Ballot Measure Twenty One One Seventy Seven. Voters are being asked this May to consider whether to restrict the use of pesticides in the county. 
As your elected sheriff, I do not think my role is to weigh in on that issue. I do, however, feel an obligation to warn you about a highly troubling part of this measure regarding how it will be enforced. This component creates real concerns for me about its impact on the safety of law enforcement officers and the general public. Section 5D of the ordinance text allows any person, whether they live in Lincoln County or not, to enforce the rights and prohibitions of this law through direct action. If they feel the county or courts have failed to sufficiently enforce or defend this ordinance. A law that would encourage vigilantism via direct action should give real pause to every voter in this election. The measure goes on to say, if enforcement through direct action is commenced, this law shall prohibit any private or public actor from filing a civil or criminal action against those participating in direct action. My deputies and other law enforcement in the county would be unable to enforce laws against trespassing, vandalism, destruction of property, and even bodily harm. There are no boundaries placed on what constitutes direct action, meaning this would authorize damage to property and even persons. Our county faces real law enforcement challenges with a vast amount of territory to cover and limited patrol resources. I am very concerned about the strain this measure would put on my office, ultimately impacting public safety countywide. Please closely consider these concerns for public safety when evaluating and thoroughly reading Measure 21-177. I encourage a no vote on Measure 21-177, Lincoln County Sheriff Curtis Landers. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, uh, Anthony, were you going to speak on the, in the public hearing? You scratched out what you had. You were going to speak about Anthony Demisel? Dem Dem no? Not here? Okay, well, we can skip over that. Um, Lori, did you, are you here still? Did you want to come up now? Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Lori Arsatoris, Executive Director of the Lincoln City Chamber. And I just wanted to quickly make sure that everybody is aware that it's Community Days coming up week after next. We spent a lot of time planning this this year. And when we sat down, we, when we decided, you know, what are we going to do for Community Days? We really wanted to in, include events that locals do. So we decided, what do we do? We surf and we have bonfires on the beach. So Friday night, we're starting off with a bonfire on the beach. Cindy Phosphat with Northwest Natural is putting that on. And then Saturday, we've added a Surf and Earth event because it happens to be Earth Day. So we're adding a lot of elements about the ocean, ocean education. We're having live bands. We'll have Rusty Truck Brewery at the Cultural Center for this Surf and Earth, Earth event. So that's a fun new one that we've added. Um, Ducky Derby will be back on the D River, so that'll be fun. Um, we've got a movie in Spanish this year for our Latino community, and we're having a class, Secrets of Salsa. What else? Lots of other things. Um, we've got radio days that we'll be doing, Chamber Business of the Year awards. We've got a lot of those coming in, and of course, we'll end the week on the 29th with the Community Days Banquet. And this year, it happens to fall on the same weekend as the Great Oregon Coast Garage Sale. So we have been so busy at the chamber office with the garage sale. We've got over well over 100 entries into the garage sale, and we'll have those on the map available on the 19th. And I had no idea how many people this brings in from out of state. Yeah, we've had so much interest in this. So it'll be a very, very busy week. So I hope to see everybody at the events and definitely at the Community Days Banquet. Thank you. And, and Lori, is there still time for people to get their ballots in if they want to nominate? Yes, we've extended it till the 14th, or Friday. Yes, 14th. Thank you. And I've Appreciate got it. posters. I'll leave up here if anybody can put them up for Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, anyone else who did not sign up uh, wish to speak for the council? Uh, who's, I've got a couple people here speaking on uh, the public hearings. I've got you here. Do you nobody? Okay. Then we move on. Uh, we have a chance to hear from Martha Watts about Shiloh, the gathering place. Come on up. Good evening. 
My name is Martha Watts. I am the founder of Shiloh the Gathering Place Ministries. I want to thank the mayor and city manager and city council for inviting us here tonight to share a little bit about who we are and what we do in the community. First off, some of you may not know, we are a licensed cafe and restaurant. Um, a lot of people think we serve the homeless and that's pretty much all we do. But one of the ways we fund our resources and our services is by providing food to the public. So we hope that those of you that are watching or here today will come by and have a bite to eat because all the proceeds go to support what we do each and every day. We're all volunteers. There's no, nobody's paid there. So that's one of the big ways that we could use your support here at Shiloh is by coming in and having a bite to eat. Best thing I could do to show you what Shiloh is is show you a little bit of a video and that hopefully might explain some of who we are and then maybe I can answer some of your questions. Lincoln City is a small tourist town on the central Oregon coast, a place where many people visit to enjoy the natural beauty. But the roughly 10,000 year-round residents know that there is another side to our little beach town. It's a place of great need and few resources. Statistically, we are above state and national averages for broken families, drug and alcohol abuse, people living below the poverty line, and homelessness. Lincoln City has no traditional shelters or transitional housing options, few state agencies, and many people who struggle every day for ways to meet their most basic needs. In October of 2016, Shiloh, the gathering place, opened its doors in a simple storefront in one of the busiest parts of town. Shiloh has the feel of a living room, a place where people can come in out of the rain and feel welcome. Since we opened, Shiloh has served over 600 gallons of hot homemade soup, along with plenty of other delicious food. Members of the community often stop by for lunch and make a donation to support Shiloh, but the food is always free to anyone who needs it. And it doesn't stop with meals. We also give away food from our food pantry, along with clothing items, jackets, sleeping bags, and tents. In cooperation with other community resources, we help to provide showers, free laundry service, and bus passes. Our volunteers help guests pursue employment assistance, seek affordable housing situations, find roommates and medical care. And throughout the week, Shiloh hosts 12-step recovery programs and a grief recovery group. But just as important as the practical help we give our guests is the compassion and warmth they experience at Shiloh, the encouragement of knowing that they are not alone in their struggles. Through the leadership of our founder and president, Martha Watts, Along with a great team of volunteers, our board, and a supportive faith community, Shiloh is turning love into action in Lincoln City. In just a short time since our doors have been opened, we've already seen the power of simple acts of compassion to change lives and help hurting people find hope again. We look forward to years of bringing real transformation to our community as more people catch the vision of Shiloh. That's what Shiloh does on a daily basis. We're up, we're running, and we're trying to make a difference in our community. One thing I'd like to also ask everyone here today and watching on TV and pass the word around, Wednesday we will be posting on our Facebook site, uh, Silo the Gathering, Silo the Gathering Place Ministries, a website that we'd all like you to go to. We've entered a grant for $100,000 and it's going to be based on our video. So we're asking the community to vote for Lincoln City and to vote for this grant so that we can get some much needed funds. We're also here tonight to ask the city to kick in and match those funds. We're hopeful that we will get this grant. Our desire is to open up a, not a transitional shelter where people can stay year round. I don't believe that that's the answer. I believe our goal is to get people's feet on the ground. We're looking at a 90-day transitional facility to help people with recovery programs, to vet them, to help people seek jobs, and to find affordable housing. We're not here to coddle anyone. We're here to make a difference in lives and see people to be self-sufficient, to be free from drugs and alcohol. We have a lot of young women that come into our facility that are in violent environments. A lot of people that don't know how to work because they've been 
so many years in the same environment that they never had the opportunity. We'd like to see Lincoln City have job programs available. We'd also like to see Lincoln City go after state, federal, and county grants for behavioral health in this community. A lot of our homeless, most of them are mentally ill, a big portion of them. We do not have the resources at Shiloh to help those that are mentally ill. We can love them, we can feed them, we could help them get their IDs, medical treatment, but we can't diagnose them and we can't provide the medications that they need. I have young one, one young man that is so brilliant. I, he's, he has to be a genius, but he hears voices. We want to help him. When we've talked to him in the past, he's had nothing but um, the opportunity where they've given him um, depression medication. He's smart enough to know he's not depressed. He says, I'm not depressed, I hear voices. That's one of the things that we could do is tap into the federal, state, and county grants for mental health here. Then we could address some of the issues of the homeless. The other issues of the homeless, again, is drug addiction and alcohol addiction. We want to have a program where they come in and they spend three months in rehab, not outpatient, but inpatient rehab, and really getting the help that they need. So that's what Shiloh's desire is, but we need the help. We've located some buildings that we think are promising for this, and we're not asking the city to hand us a building. If you have one, that would be great, but we're asking for assistance to continue the work that we've started here, and we're also asking for funds to keep the doors open. Any questions? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I would like to know when, what hours do you serve food? We serve food from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Uh, do you also take direct donations from people? And, uh, and what days do you accept donations? Any time. You got, you got something, I'll come yeah, get sure. it. <laughs> yeah. um, or they can mail it to us or drop it off. We do accept donations. One of the great things is that we've brought the community together. Um, many of the local churches and the ministerial association has now, through Silo, we have set up a benevolence fund. This fund is being funded through the churches because so many people go to the churches for help. And what they do is they go from church to church to church. And this fund and this program that Shiloh will be doing through the help of the churches is we will be vetting these people. So when they go into the church, they say, hey, we have a benevolent fund, go over there. And then we're able to work with these individuals and find out what help they really do need. And some of them are habitual. You know, they know that we're, we're softies in this community. We give. This community gives and gives and gives. But we also need to be responsible and wise stewards of the money and the funds. So this way we kind of cut out some of that repetitive um, that we see out there in the community. Yeah. Uh, also, do you find that uh, if there were volunteer opportunities for the individuals that need assistance, do you think that they would partake in those volunteer uh, opportunities in town? there was a way to get them there or something like that. Do you, do you feel that kind of thing that they would like to do something or yes. are, they, are they not there yet? Some are. Um, we have one gentleman that he was actually a transient. He spent 50 years of his life uh, in the streets and but he was on social security disability not enough to um, to have a place to live but he would go volunteer at the community center he would go to the warming shelter and set up beds and he'd help with us sweeping around so they they do a lot of people do want to earn money or to do something they just need a chance and they need an opportunity and some just need training and also employers that are willing to give someone who maybe has a record a chance you mentioned um Again, thank you for, for the presentation. You mentioned a 90-day um, <laughs> a 90-day um, 
transition facility. Um, could you talk a little bit more about what that would be? Someone could come and stay and have a bed and ha have work they could do or I mean what what do you see as that? The goal is to 90 days is generally the best amount of time. 60 days is not enough. Um, most people who are addicted need a in-house, in-home facility. They need um, basically checking in, drug checks, um, drug testing. <laughs> They get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. They have to be out looking for work. If they um, don't have a job, then they need to be volunteering somewhere in the community, whether it's through the city, picking up trash, or another nonprofit. Um, they need to be involved in different rehab programs that are out there in the community. They can sleep there, but they can't stay there all day. Basically, come daytime, just like your work day, they get up, they get out. They need to show that they're actively looking for work um, and donate so many hours per week or per day. Um, but they also need to be getting the mental health that they need as well. So it's a, it's a big, there's no one answer. Um, again, people need to be vetted. There's some people we can't help that need to be in a state facility that need actual, you know, Thorazine or something. So um, we could do what we can do, but we can't fix everyone. Do you, um, <clears throat> so that's what would happen if um, if I needed a place to stay and I needed some help and I would go there. What is it that you and your associates would do? They would provide the place, they would uh, manage it, would they coordinate services? Um, I'm not quite sure what your job <laughs> would be. <laughs> Lots of hats. Yeah. Um, we would have the facility. Um, we would obviously need volunteers um, and or paid people. It just depends on how much this grows. Um, when we started Shiloh um, and we opened our doors, we just did it. I didn't know how I was going to pay the bills. Um, still don't from day to day, but we're still open. And so my point was to do it. Just take the step and the rest will fall into place and it has and it continues to so get the building okay can we afford this rent how can we afford the rent or lease mm -hmm. um, we need the volunteers construction maybe um, in some cases you know you need the ADA bathroom shower facilities we've already priced lockers so we've done some of our homework. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of getting the facility and, and again, the, the community backing behind us, not just financially, but the support uh, emotionally. I just have one more question, which is um, if you could open those doors today, how many people do you think a month that you would have staying there? Local. Um, I would say you could have 50 plus realistically really? if they knew that that there was a place that they could go and get help. Transients is a, is a different story. Mm -hmm. Sure. Men, women, families. Sorry. Our goal, absolutely. Families is a big part of this, um, but Family Promise is doing great things. The, the churches in the community have been very supportive with Family Promise. You know, the churches and the faith-based community has really been the, the spokes and the hub and so we have places like Family Promise and Shiloh and um, the warming shelter that really we couldn't exist if it wasn't for the faith community. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, thank you for your presentation. I wouldn't even know that Shiloh's there. As, as I walk down the street I wouldn't have the vaguest notion that it's there. Um, how do you maintain acceptable behavior or is that not a problem in your area? We haven't really had any issues to speak of. Um, I think they're most of them very respectable of us. Um, if there is an issue they always they mind. They know that we're the hand that's feeding them. Um, they come in, they get dry, we give them fresh socks and, and clothes and jackets and the things that they need and we feed them and we take 
good care of them. It's a, when I set Shiloh up, I wanted it to be a home setting, a place for people who didn't have a home that they could come in and feel like they did have a home. And so they are very respectable. Every once in a while you might have someone comes in that's a little bit tanked and as long as they're not disruptive and they're not abusive in any way, that's fine. We would rather them get sober, you know, give them some soup and some coffee and then send them on them w their way than have them go out into the, the road trying to cross the street. So um, again, everybody's been respectful and we haven't had any issues. We have families coming in with children eating lunch. Um, eating again it's it's the haves and the haves not that come and meet together in one place and it's quite unique thank you please thank you by the way for that presentation and thanks for everything you're doing um, have you uh, gone up to Portland at all to observe the uh, the different uh, organizations or programs that they have to uh, combat uh, homelessness? I haven't necessarily visited the ones in Portland, um, but I've spent years in the streets working with different organizations. Um, we are familiar with um, Random Acts of Kindness that um, is in Portland. They do a lot of feeding of people underneath the bridges. Um, I don't know that there's any one answer or one organization. It's a big it's a big issue, and it's not anything that you could put a Band-Aid on. I think you need to address all of it, the mental health, the affordable housing, the job training. So everything pretty much has to work hand in hand. You can't just feed someone and think that they're okay. It's a bigger picture. And so all the organizations out there we can glean from and learn from, but I think it's a big task, and it's bigger than any one facility can do. Well, I ask that because uh, Sisters of the Road Cap Bay in Portland seems a lot like your organization that you have. I, if, if it's still open, which I think it is, they have a really successful model that's last many years. So. I'd like to check that out. Yep. Thank you. It, it means a lot. I know you uh, you've given up a lot, and, and I would I know you don't want the attention, but I would suggest anyone who wants to hear Martha's story, it's well worth hearing what she has sacrificed to make this happen. Uh, she followed the Lord's call, and uh, we have a, a place that that is there to help people uh, because of what she's done. So, thank you, Martha, and you, you have our support. Appreciate the time that you let us come share. Thank you. Um, all right, uh, my sisters, yep, yep. Martha. Oh, you know, we didn't get your address either. <laughs> I, I wrote that down. And, uh, <laughs> Martha, if you could just come back to the mic and give the address of the, the gathering. Um, we're at 2139 Northwest Highway 101. And again, our Facebook is Shiloh the Gathering Ministries, um, and we will be posting that site. It's uh, through USA Today. It's called uh, Community Thrive. You just have to find our video, and it's a hundred thousand dollar grant, and we want it. So, go vote for us. And is there a phone number uh, for us? Yeah, yeah it's five four one nine two one nine one zero five. Thanks again. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, Christy Camacho, my sister's place. Hi, my name is actually Michelle Gaither. I'm a shelter advocate at my sister's place. You're welcome. April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. My Sister's Place is a sexual, domestic, and dating violence prevention and intervention program. Our mission is to comprehensively support those affected by interpersonal violence in Lincoln County by providing shelter and practical assistance, by promoting community awareness, and actively working to change the community norms around violence. Here are just a few facts about sexual assault in Oregon. Sexual assault affects every Oregonian, whether as a victim or survivor, a family member, 
friend, partner, neighbor, employer, or coworker. About one in four adult women in Oregon have, has been the victim of rape in their lifetime. And nearly one in five men in Oregon has experienced sexual violence in their lifetime. Working together, compassion, compassionate, courageous, and dedicated individuals, local organizations, and other partners have provided services and support for victims and survivors and have worked to prevent sexual violence for decades. In 2015, we at my sister's place sheltered a total of 51 women and 30 children for a total of 3,067 bed nights. We answered 426 crisis calls and 866 total calls. We helped survivor, survivors create 392 safety plans and file 52 pr protective orders. Although we serve people from all over Lincoln County, as well as a small percentage from elsewhere in Oregon and from out of state, the highest percentage of clients served came from Lincoln City, with a total of over 21%. We know that sexual violence is preventable and that all communities are strengthened when we promote healthy and safe attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors, while also working to eliminate tolerance for violence. Every individual and community in Oregon has a role to play to help eliminate sexual violence by promoting social change. So tonight, we at My Sister's Place ask that you join us and our many community partners in recognizing April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month and that you find out and we challenge you to find out how you as individuals and as a community can help bring, aware, bring awareness to and help prevent all forms of sexual violence in Lincoln City and throughout Oregon. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming forward. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Okay. So again, it, in our agenda it says Christy Camacho, but that's not your name. No, I'm Michelle Gaylor. She's our outreach coordinator. I'm an advocate here at the shelter itself. If I may ask you some questions. Of course. Do you do presentations for the middle and high school students? You know, I believe that we have historically. I personally have not, but would I mean, love not the you, opportunity. Yeah, I would love the opportunity to. I think it's a great tool. Uh, I personally know m many women that have had problems. Is there a number that people can call? I, I, you know, you said you gave the, cr the numbers for the crisis and the total calls, but. Absolutely. We have, we have a 24-hour, uh, seven-day-a-week, 365-day-a-year crisis line it's called our Hope Line. The phone number is 541-994-5959. Yes. And we rotate on a rotating basis. We all take turns answering calls whatever time they come in. Do you take third-party calls for those that are too scared to call? Or does it have to be the victim itself? We, we, we appreciate what we call a warm handoff. We, we, people call, but we, we would like to speak to the survivor or the victim themselves. And mostly that's because unless somebody Correct. asks for help right. themselves, you know, many well-meaning family members uh, yeah. think they're ready when they're not. Right. Do you... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for what you do. All right. Uh, we are now at the public hearing public comment section to receive public comment regarding the proposed Northeast 36th Street and West Devils Lake Road Sewer Reimbursement District. Um, it is now 6.47 p.m. The public hearing for formation of a sewer reimbursement district on Northeast 36th Street and West Devils Lake Road is now open. This public hearing concerns a request for forming a reimbursement district to extend sewer service. The council must take a few moments to cover some preliminary matters and required statements. Does any member of the council wish to declare an ex parte contact, conflict of interest, or bias in this matter? Hearing none. <clears throat> Does any member of the audience? I'm sorry. Your Honor, I, I have spoken to one of the families. Um, I've had discussions with them about their failed septic system. Um, I have no bias before the hearing. Let's Thank you. Mm -hmm. right, right. I'm trying to flag someone down to close the door. <laughs> Thank you, Chief Scott. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, does any member of the audience wish to challenge the qualifications of a counselor to participate in this matter? Hearing none. Does any member of the audience wish to challenge the jurisdiction of the council to consider this matter? Hearing none. 
Generally, the order of proceedings will be as follows. Preliminary matters, staff report, public comment in favor, public comment opposed. Close of the hearing, close of the record, deliberations and decision. If you wish to speak, please write your name and mailing address clearly on the sign-up list at the entrance, which I now have. Please speak directly into the microphone and begin by sp <clears throat> stating your name. If you wish to have written testimony to submit into the record, please provide a copy to the recorder. Speakers may have up to three minutes. Staff report, please. Good evening. So this is a public hearing continued. Um, I want to start off a little bit by setting the stage uh, for uh, sort of the state of our sewers in Lincoln City. Um, we in the city have about 280 septic systems in the city limits. Um, there's also roughly uh, 60 or so vacant lots that don't have sewer service available. Previously, most of our, almost all of our sewers have been constructed through local improvement districts in the 70s and then again a lot of in the 90s. So recently we've done, um, we've created some districts to extend sewer service. One has been a local improvement district. Um, two have been reimbursement districts. So I'm going to talk about the distinctions of the two types. But um, these previous ones that we've just completed recently anyway, they have been all for pressure sewer systems. So now I'm going to start with the background of the public hearing and why we're here tonight. Um, so we did have um, a property owner that had a failing septic system. Their drain field is toast. Currently they're pumping, they have a, a tank, they're regularly pumping it. Um, this area, as it turned out, this area can be served by gravity sewer. So the proposal is, and our rule is, if we can serve by gravity, if we can extend the gravity system, we need to do that. So um, that's why we're doing gravity system and not pressure. Now the cost to reach these property owners from the existing gravity system to serve them would have been, is about $100,000. And that would have been borne by them and possibly a property owner that would also benefit. But that was really too much for them to shoulder. Um, so when they came to staff, I um, suggested that we form a reimbursement district, that the city extend the sewer and then get paid back as people connect to the system. Here is the area that we advertise for the reimbursement district. Now this is on Northeast 36th Drive and um, West Devils Lake Road. Um, um, the, the sewer um, can be extended to serve the properties outlined in black. Um, about, it's about 550 feet. It's gonna cost about 120,000. At the time I advertised this, um, we were assuming nine potential benefited properties, and that came out to about 13,000 per property. Now, after I got <coughs> comments back from people in the advertised district, um, there was one home that was already sewered. They've already paid to be sewered. Um, and so initially I had them in the district. I went ahead and took them out. Let's see this guy's right here. And I had this property owner, because it could be a duplex or at the time I thought maybe it could be subdivided into two lots or just a little bit shy of being able to subdivide that into two lots. So I changed the number from nine potential benefited properties to seven. Now that's what I'm coming, that's a modified um, district other than what you're gonna hear testimony on tonight. So they've only seen the first proposal with all nine properties. I'm suggesting that if we go forward with the reimbursement district, we take two out. Or we take, we take one out and we only assess the one lot, one lot. So one of the things that when I heard from the property owners, one of the problems with the reimbursement district or one of the issues, I guess, is that um, there, the city pays for the line to be installed and then the property owners pay to connect. They pay the full amount to connect. There's no financing. So in this case, they would have the 13,000 if you're going by the number one or number two. I'm on. I'm on. <laughs> um, so that was one concern I had is people don't, you know, didn't want to have to just come up with 
15,000 or so cash to connect to the sewer. Also, in our, current, in our ordinance, if you have a gravity line that goes in front of your home, we require that you connect within six months. So all these benefited properties, whether their systems were failing or not, by our ordinance would need to connect within six months. So I heard a lot of negative you know, um, feedback on that. They didn't want to have to do that. Another option um, is instead of a reimbursement district, we form a local improvement district. The local improvement districts can be initiated by the property owners, 50% or more of the people in the assessed district, or it can be initiated by city council. Um, the nice thing about local improvement districts compared to reimbursement districts for financing, um, people can begin making payments. And in fact, the payments are based on the life of the local improvement district. So that same amount of money essentially would then be paid back monthly. But you would start being assessed whether you connected or not. Or if your property was vacant or not, you still would be assessed for your share of the, of the um, sewer. So that's kind of the two differences and why I bring that up is because um, I'm going to throw out another option. Um, instead of doing a reimbursement district that we potentially make this, um, this area a local improvement district to allow for the financing. The other issue that came up when I began to look at this area and I wanted to let everyone know that this is really ultimately this and this whole area in black does not have sewer um, some of it's developed on the south um, but and primarily there's a 4.8 acre parcel undeveloped on the north um, if so another option or a future could be that we could go ahead and extend the local improvement district boundary to serve this entire area so this would be fully served with sewer now that would you know it would cost a lot of money um, to build it the half a million dollars but then there's 53 or so potentially benefited properties depending on how much you assess the parcel that's undeveloped and I used planning's formula to come up with um, a number there that does bring the cost per property down um, but again that's that's another option so I'm going to summarize the options and of course Mr. Chandler if you want to clarify anything at this point yeah uh, just to, just to jump back in and recap a little bit on the reimbursement district versus the uh, local improvement district the reimbursement district has the advantage to the city in that we pay for the construction uh, and install the sewer line and then within six months the funds are reimbursed to the city the city is not a bank under that circumstance the downside for the property owners of course is that they have to come up with thirteen thousand dollars or seventeen thousand whichever uh, you end up with or ten thousand dollars if you go with the third one and uh, and they would have to come up with that within six months of the time of the uh, uh, the installation of the sewer line the local improvement district on the other hand the city again uh, installs the sewer and uh, and pays for the cost of that uh, the advantage to the property owner is that they can spread the payment out over the life of the improvement district so they have monthly payments um, and uh, and and then also sometime within that 20-year period uh, which is the length of the improvement districts we've done in the past they would hook up to the to the system the downside for the city is that we become a bank and uh, when you are a bank you have to have money to be able to loan out now as we have looked at our um, our uh, uh, unfund or unbonded assessment fund where this money would come from we have approximately five hundred thousand dollars in that uh, so this is essentially would tap out for any future improvement districts unless we in, until such time as the money is repaid and we recoup it or we add more funds to that so as you as you go through and look at these decisions 
um, it's important to make that distinguish. There's some advantages and disadvantages to both the city and the uh, and the owners that would be served by this sewer. Okay. So I'm going to summarize with your options. <clears throat> you can do nothing. You can approve the formation of the reimbursement district um, with seven properties, as as advertised. You can initiate a local improvement district for the same seven properties. I'm sorry. I, okay, no. I don't uh, start over because I'm only giving you the option. No. You, you can form the district with nine properties or with seven properties. You can do a reimbursement district or a local improvement district. Or you can initiate a local improvement district to serve the 53 potential connections or the larger expanded area. I think that's... Okay, if you'll go back to the map, and I'll just recap that as well a little bit. Uh, so if you look at... Again, your first option is to do nothing. If you do nothing, then the people that have their septic systems would then be responsible for replacing, repairing uh, their septic systems. Um, the second is to prove the formation of a local, no, no, go back to the, go back other one. To the big one. Yeah. Is to create a, a reimbursement district that is essentially these lots right here. Okay. And, and again, in that case, if it's a reimbursement district upon its, the completion of the installation, uh, all of the owners would have six months to pay uh, their fee and, uh, and connect into the system. If it's under a local improvement district, again, this area, and the sewer comes, this is the end of the existing sewer, it comes down around the corner. And under a local improvement district, they again would begin paying on a monthly basis uh, for, the, um, for the, the cost of their, of their sewer fee or sewer installation fee, and the city would essentially finance that over time. Now the next option, would be, and you can do this in one or two sections, um, would be to extend the sewer down to this point and pick up all of these properties right in here. Now you can do, and I mentioned you can do it in two ways. One is that you can make that all one reimbursement district or one local improvement district, again, with the same benefits and disadvantages or you can do them in two separate ones where you deal with this one first and then begin, uh, and then begin the second uh, phase of that, uh, uh, of, of either a reimbursement district or a local improvement district. There is mud. There is mud. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're going to hear testimony on tonight is just for the original all, all the public has seen has been noticed is for the original advertised reimbursement district. Just to let you know where be, they'll be coming from. Thank you. Okay, so it's really not even an option to discuss the other part because they haven't been noticed, right? If Okay, so if you did, were interested in going through the expanded, we would have to do a new public hearing. We'd have to do a new notice. We'd notice all of the ex extended properties right. and we sort of start over again yeah mm -hmm. and then again that would be if you did it all at, at once if you did it with a is that as part of a second district you could proceed forward with the first one and then start the process with the second one but we still have to have a hearing if we changed from a reimbursement district to a local improvement district for the small area we will still have to have another public hearing and notice it as a local improvement district instead of a reimbursement district. Yes, please. If we did it in two stages, the property owners wouldn't see any reduction in the assessment amount, correct? No, uh, because you would be going one right after another, so the cost would be the same. Well, but the cost per property Oh, would be higher because it would be based on a smaller area, correct? Okay. That would be so correct. So if we want to reduce the price per property, we would need to include a larger area. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. May I ask a question? Please. Um, 
whichever one of these that we select, um, maybe the LID because that, that would be the one that they pay over time. And what is the end date? I mean, if they live forever and have that same piece of property, is it the 20 years that it would be paid by? The last improvement district we did was over a 20 year period. Okay, and what if someone sells their house? Do they have to pay the full amount before the pay? The yes, our, our, last di our last district we in included triggers, house sale, house remodel above 50% or any time that the septic did need to be repaired. So there are other triggers. And we could put conditions on it if mm -hmm. that's the way we went. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, please. But the 20 years was was determined by council, correct? Correct. Correct. We mm -hmm. could make that shorter. Or yes, we can. Mr. Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Um, just a kind of homework. All the, the seven or nine on the original have been contacted with certified mail? Yes. And it, they, you've heard back from I've them? I've heard back from s all but two. And um, I've talked to them or gotten correspondence from them. Fr from those from two? From all but two. Do we know that they got their, was it a certified letter? Oh, yes. Letter they, they, they received the okay. information, yeah. Yeah, Just yeah for sure. From we do experience. a certified, and then we also follow with a regular mailing. We've gotten none returned, so. Okay. Um, then going to that same group, the smaller group, has there, was there any work research done as far as the aging of the existing septic systems? We know the one is failing, so, but the other, I think there was a letter in the packet of, of a, somebody had bought property and it just refurbished their septic system in the last mm -hmm. three years. Right, the, I think the other five. <coughs> We haven't looked at the other five. We haven't looked at the inspected the condition or asked or just about the other Just from documents or anything, we wouldn't. Okay. One of the other property owners wants to connect right away, though. That's next to the failing system mm -hmm. on the same, just right next door. So she she wants she wants to connect right away. And then um, I have to ask, but has there been any contact on the bigger? geography of the owner or owners just informally I understand we haven't noticed them but um, as to future development plans early if if this was to go in um, does that in, assist them encourage them to develop sooner well if we if we do go forward with that we you would you would hear from them I'm sure um, but they did come in for a pre-application, but there was no, they're just thinking about what they could possibly do with their, with their property. And sewer availability was an issue, it is an issue, for sure. A positive. So it was more of a fact-finding uh, discussion mm -hmm. yeah. right. on their part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay, so there's been a touch there, they're, they're thinking. The other, is I, I'm pretty sure I heard you, you say it, but part of Council City's goal is to make sure there's sewer all in, in the entire city. Is that so? This is in that spirit. We're trying to find tools and have tools to assist in um, swapping out septic systems onto sewer that's viable. So this falls right in line. Exactly. Thank you. Question? Did you have a question? No. Okay. Um, can is can you open that slide again? Sure, sorry. Uh, uh, the one where you expanded uh, the extra properties. There. That's a big vacant lot. Is it? Is that a single ownership? Uh, this this property is the this property is the four point eight acres. It's under one ownership. It's actually zoned commercial, which does make it hard to. I mean, the potential type of development is, you know, hard to pin down at this point because with a commercial property, four point eight acres, there's a lot of things they could do. Absolutely, and, and mm -hmm. it, it opens up more avenues with the sewer installed. Yeah. Oh, okay, that, that helps. Uh, and then just a, a kind of a general question, and maybe it's more for Debbie, but what, what's the failure rate on repayments on, on these kind of things? 
when, when we ask the, uh, the homeowners to pay. I want to have to bring back the information. I do not know that off the top of my head. Just in, in your general experience, do you, do you see it as a problem? No, because of the trigger points. Uh, there are things that trigger it when you would have to pay it, pay it back in full. So, uh, no, my experience with improvement districts is that they're pretty safe as far as repayment goes. So the city being the banker is not a huge risk? Not in my experience. But I can, I can see, check for our community for certain and see what we have. Mayor, may I ask one more question? Um, I didn't realize that that was um, commercial, that larger lot. And so how, how do you figure out, um, is that one ownership and they pay one $10,000 no, they were, um, you? based on the, f the formula, again, this would be something we'd really, a number we'd have to hone in on, but based on the formula from the planning uses, uh, it was a potential 39 units, and that's okay. the number I used. And that's how you got to 53? Correct. And there was 19 plus, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, I have two people signed up for testimony. Uh, those opposition, I think you're both in opposition. No, pro. Okay, so we go pro first. Uh, Diane Rodriguez. Diane, Diane, sorry. Diane. Um, hello. Um, you have heard uh, tonight about Diane, the... Diane, I know I've said your name, but you need sorry. to say it for the record. Diane Rodriguez, and we live at the corner of Northeast 36th and West Devil's Lake Road, and uh, we have the property with the failing system. Um, we are hugely in favor of many of these options that put a uh, sewer system in front of our house. Um, our septic system is approximately 40 years old, so it has served its purposes and has lived its life, but we are at a point where we have to make a change. When we bought our house, we knew it was on the septic system. We had hoped all along that when we reached this point, the sewer line would already be there because I have kept track of discussions with the city. The city has had about sewering various points of the city and was kind of keeping my fingers crossed that uh, so the sewer line would come first rather than the septic system uh, standing on its last legs. Um, that hasn't, it hasn't quite happened that way. Um, but our, the point of wanting the city sewer line in is that we only wanted to do this once. We didn't want to face the prospect of replacing a septic system and then five years down the road having to connect to a city sewer system and absorbing anywhere from twenty dollars to $30,000 in cost each time. Um, we're really happy that the city has discovered that they can extend that gravity line, which literally is around the corner and about a block and a half from our house. Um, we would like a gravity line would be much easier for us to hook into, um, much easier to deal with than a pressure line, and probably easier for everyone all the way around because there's less, less equipment to maintain in the future. So basically, in short, we are very happy to hook up to our sewer line. Uh, we would prefer that it be a gravity line. Um, I don't know if I can say this yet or not. I think the expanded district is what we would be kind of hoping for, but um, we'll take what we can get, but we just hope that you do approve some kind of sewer line being set up on West Devils Lake Road and 36 to help us alleviate our issues. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Appreciate it very much. And then uh, John Miller. Good evening. I'm John Miller. I live on 36 Drive also. And uh, I'm going to read a letter I actually wrote to the uh, Stephanie. Um, I received a letter that the sewer line being installed down my street on 36 Drive to accommodate one house on the street. The letter states that it will be beneficial, beneficial to my property. I don't see that since I bought the property a little over three years ago and the septic tank was re excuse me, replaced at the time. Um, the reason I replaced it is because it was failing. So there was no sewer lines, so the best option is have it done. 
Um, if I knew the city was going to change this, I would have waited three years. Um, but there was no indication that they were going to repair the, put a sewer line in or um, any kind of repair was going to be done to the sewer line gravity or otherwise. A gravity system on my property most likely will not work. Um, my property actually sits below the street level and my sewer line comes out about 10 feet below my house where my septic system is because my septic system sits way below the street, almost 15 feet. So my, one would, my sewer system would have to be a pressure system to bring it up to your sewer line because I don't think they dig a sewer line that deep in this town. Um, uh, $13,000 $13, is a lot of money for me to spend that I just spent $5,000 on a septic system that's working perfectly. I understand a sewer line needs to be installed through the city and it's always beneficial for the whole community. Um, but there's uh, other people in my town, in my neighborhood that are on fixed incomes and it's, it would be tough for them. I know it would be tough for me because right now I just put all my money into my house. Um, a lid is an option. LID is an option for everybody. Um, it's it's it'd be tougher, but if it's a monthly thing, it'd be better than seven, thirteen to seventeen thousand dollars in within six months. And I can reconnect at any time. By twenty years, my septic would probably be need to be replaced again. The um, I just feel that a, a lid would be better or nothing at all right now, and let the failing system repair, have them repair their own system. Uh, it's a little mean to say that, I know, but uh, why should everybody else pay for their problem? Also that the, uh, why doesn't they, why don't they go all the way to the top of the hill as the, as the lo lo larger map says, that uh, would be beneficial to benefit to the city and to the people in the lid district. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you coming forward. Thank you. Much. Uh, that's the end of everyone I have on my list. Anyone who wanted to speak on this issue who did not sign up? Please, come forward. Just sit in any microphone you like, state your name, and have at it. Well, good evening. My name's Melanie Emerson, and I also live on 36. This gentleman's our neighbor. We also are below the street and it would not be gravity for us. We have a wonderful system. We have a sand system and we protect it and we treat it and we take good care of it because it's so important. For us to hook up to the sewer, I believe we need to have a pump. How does it get from the back to the front? So um, I agree with our neighbor we don't need this sewer at this time. Our, our system is beautiful. That's it. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you for coming forward. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Uh, any testimony from representatives of public agencies? Continuance or leave the record open? I guess this public hearing is uh, for the uh, district, um, the reimbursement district. Um, so if we change directions, we'll need a public hearing anyway. So, you know, in that case, I'd, I'd make a motion to close the public hearing and the record. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Yeah, I would have to agree. I, I think we've got a bigger... Uh, bigger issue ahead of us so yeah I just don't want anyone to panic and think we're closing it moving forward we're I think we're in agreement we're going to close it just to look at the other options and give everyone a chance to testify um, with that do I need a roll call okay all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed hearing none motion carries and so we close the record we close the hearing da -da 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 -da. okay uh, we don't have the city attorney here uh, nothing in his, that he left us with, Kathy, to read? Okay. Um, but for the ordinance, um, 
when we get to that part, I can read the title. Yeah. Well, that closes that, right? You done with that? Yes. So, Mr. Mayor, but please. I, I guess um, should our should we provide some direction to staff um, rather than just let this hang? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I just want to make sure I'm done with that script. script. Okay. I thought you were moving on the order. No, no, just, just done with the script. Get off that page. So, yes, uh, what would you suggest? <coughs> Mr. Anderson. <laughs> um, I guess I would like um, to like take a look at the bigger picture, um, the uh, LID and bigger geography because I'm I'm motivated to get more of the city sewered um, and off cyst, off septic system so I, I would like to take a look at that and you know work through using that vehicle uh, as to what gets in the way and what might bounce us out of the bigger picture into a smaller LID uh, if that's at all possible and practical I would also I just want to would like to say that um, it seems that larger <coughs> option the 53 um, would provide um, more service for the city which we need to be doing and it would also drop the price to the folks that would be responsible for paying for their part of it and uh, I'd really like to see more about that yeah and I, I would like to know the thoughts of the large landowner, uh, uh, if, if at all possible. I remember living through this in East County, Portland, and uh, it was it was quite a mess. But it, it ended up benefiting everybody. And uh, um, but yeah, we've got to be sensitive to the the expense that each homeowner has to bear, whether they can or cannot afford it. And uh, so, Mr. Mayor, I, I guess the other thing I would say, and I I don't know how to because uh, I I didn't hear a what the I know the rush a failing system I don't didn't hear a time frame oh, rush yeah. like like I'm pumping daily or weekly now uh, would be a real rush um, so I, I would like to encourage us to you know handle it uh, with expedience um, you know assuming that the Rodriguez's are in you know a, a decision-making time frame they've got to do one or the other and uh, I'd like them to have them get them on a sewer. Is that enough for you then? I think so. Everyone satisfied with that? We don't have to make a motion. Getting run right. Bring something back. If there's anything you want to plug into this now, feel free. Okay. All right. Now may I move on, Councilor Anderson? He's checking. <laughs> I feel a jab. <laughs> All right, we're going to have uh, Ordinance 2017-04, and Kathy, you're going to read that instead of... Uh, yes, Mr. Chandler, Mr. Chandler, do you have anything that you would like to talk about first before I read the title on 2017-04? It's the only thing I really have on this is uh, just first summary as to what the intent of this ordinance really is. Um, uh, it is uh, it piggybacks uh, the state law and um, right now all cross connections uh, are supposed to uh, be tested once a year on cross connections of what it's a water cross connection uh, so for example uh, this would this really deals with a lot with uh, the buildings that have uh, fire suppression uh, they come off they dead end uh, just like you have a dead-end water line, uh, the water settles, things settle in it, that can come back into your water system. So the, that's the connection, that's the cross connection. The way to prevent that is through a backflow preventer, which is required, and those backflow preventers are required to be tested annually. If they're not, um, uh, this is where the state lacks the teeth and is depending on the city to have a little bit of enforcement power. Right now, the only enforcement we have of this is that we shut off their water. Uh, we wanted to find an intermediate step. That intermediate step under this ordinance would allow the city to then test and even re and even require repairs on that, and then uh, require the um, the property owner 
to uh, repay the city for that through their water bill. And if nothing happens at that point, then we can, or, uh, and then the, the ultimate option, of course, is to, to shut off the water, but this gives us an intermediate step on that. And so that's the purpose of it. Ready? Very good. Ordinance 2017-04, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title 13, Public Services, adding a new Chapter 13.18, Cross-Connection Control, providing for the establishment and administration of cross-connection regulations consistent with Oregon administrative rules, amending Chapter 13.12, Water and Sewer System Rates and Charges, Section 13.12.055, Cross-Connection, to remove outdated provisions. I move to approve the first reading of uh, ordinance number 2017-04. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Hearing none. Roll call. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Walkie? Yes. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. And Ward is absent. Thank you. Well, we do need, no, do we count them as absent or do we, here we go. We need a yes to get a majority. So we can go to and the That's a yes. yes? That is a yes. Motion so. carries. So we can do, go straight to the second? <laughs> we can go straight to the second reading. We can, we can go to second reading. Um, second reading for ordinance 2017-04, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title 13 Public Services, adding a new Chapter 13.18, Cross-Connection Control, providing for the establishment and administration of cross-connection regulations consistent with Oregon administrative rules, amending Chapter 13.12, Water and Sewer, sewer System Rates and Charges, Section 13.12.055, cross-connection, to remove outdated provisions. Requesting um, approval of second reading of Ordinance 2017-04. Move to approve. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Casper? Yes. Walkie? Yes. Ward? Yes. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for filling in tonight. Um, Mayor Williams, before we start the next section, I would like to um, request an amendment to uh, under special order of business section J. And I'll pass this out. We were just, we were able to complete the all five applicants for the background uh, and the reference check and the interviews for the budget committee and our budget committee meeting begins on our first meeting is scheduled for the 17th so we don't have another city council meeting between now and then and I have I'll pass out these applications but we have five applicants for three positions for the budget committee that I would like to get council's consideration to amend the agenda to um, hear this these this section number 12 actually it would be number 12 on our agenda yeah, I move to amend the agenda to include um, consideration of budget committee applicants. Second. 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 Motion to second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. So someone's going to have to walk me through what our procedure is going to be with this. Councilor Hoagland and I interviewed. Um, the applicants at this point just say who we would move forward okay Councillor Hoagland would you like to go first sure we're going for three positions right yes okay. yes correct my recommendations are Kevin Hanbaum uh, Chester Noriakis and Amanda Cherry Holmes. Okay. I would recommend Mr. Jerry Warner, uh, Kevin, I'm going to try home, 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 sorry, and uh, Chester Norakis. I 
um, I moved to appoint Chester Nariakis to the Budget Committee. I second. We hadn't changed that procedure. We're, we're doing it by the voice vote here. I'm sorry, what? We're just doing it by a voice vote here. We don't have to go through the, the um, rigmarole of the paper and all that again. I didn't have any paper uh, created. It looks like we may need some, but um, just just a, a voice vote is fine. All right, we'll do that. Okay, so mm. I'm sorry. Did we get a second? Okay. Yes. We have a motion to second discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. And I move to appoint Kevin Hongbaum as um, a member of the Budget Committee. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. We have Mr. Warner, we have uh, Ms. Cherry home. Well, I'll make a motion to uh, appoint uh, Mr. Jerry Warner to our budget committee. A second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Aye. Nay. Motion fails. I make a motion to approve Amanda or to appoint Amanda Cherry Holmes for the budget committee. Second. second. Motion to second. Discussion? Um, I, while I applaud her effort in wanting to come forward, I just I didn't see the, the qualifications as opposed to Mr. Warner, um, who's got a, a lifetime of, of dealing with budgets. Um, uh, we've got someone new coming in, Mr. Holmbaum, which I like to see, um, but I just I just didn't see any anything that led me to support her nomination. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Oh, nay. Two nays? There was two. I, I'm assuming it's two nays. So, motion carries. So, that's uh, Kevin, Chester, and Amanda. Just to confirm, I had two, two uh, nays on the vote. Okay, great. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, thank you to all the applicants. I appreciate you uh, stepping forward. Uh, for uh, Mr. Warner, we thank him for his past service. He's um, a valued member of the Budget Committee. And, and I'd like to um, thank McNeil Smith for Oh, applying. yes, thank you. Yeah, well, I did thank everyone for applying, but thank you to McNeil Smith. Okay. Um, with that, we move on. Um, minutes of the work session meeting, September 23rd, 2016. Excuse me. And the minutes of the meeting on December 19, 2016. I move to approve the minutes of the work session meeting on September 23rd, 2016, and the minutes of the meeting on December 19th, 2016. Can we lump those together? That's fine. Second. Motion and second. Discussion? I would like to not vote. I did not read, nor was I present. I'd like to abstain. I'm abstaining. Okay. Let's still leave this for. All right. Thank you. Um, where the heck am I? Discussion? No? Further? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. <coughs> okay. City manager reports. Nothing. Okay. Um, we did have a question for you. Um, your blog, your is that still up and alive? It is up, not totally alive. <laughs> okay. But uh, yes, it is still in operation, but I'm not updated as well. Okay. Thanks for just thinking about that. Okay. Uh, actions, if any, based on executive session. Uh, we're going to need another executive session, please. Ron or Kathy, we did not complete our task. At the next meeting. <laughs> yep. Please. Okay. Additional comments from citizens present on non agenda items. Good evening again, Council Rex Capri, Newport. 
Um, again, uh, speaking on this uh, ballot measure number 21177, I would just like to ask that the council consider after uh, careful uh, perusal of this measure and ordinance language and, and discussion, uh, entertain uh, making a motion to take a stand on this measure. I think it's important due to uh, uh, the significance of the language and, and the unintended harm that it could possibly cause this county and even your community here. So I would ask that uh, you either consider a motion or a motion for a resolution or put it on your agenda for your next meeting. But uh, I think it's important as elected officials that uh, you show the, the people that you represent that this is an important issue and you need to take some kind of stand to show them uh, where you stand on this issue. So again, I would ask you to consider uh, some type of action on this. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Appreciate you coming forward. Anyone else? Going, going, gone. Oh, she raised her hand. Oh, oh, oh. Come forward, please. Don't be shy. Just pick a microphone and state your name, please. I'm Mary Waters, and the reason I'm here tonight... Mary, you're going to need to move near that microphone. You can pull it towards okay. you. Or I'm Mary Waters, and the reason I'm here tonight is... Well, I stumbled on the homeless issue when I was reading about what Amanda Cherry Holmes had to say. And it just brought some questions to mind. Um, first of all, aren't we making taxes citywide off of the shops that are currently selling marijuana? As well as statewide? And if we are, um, why couldn't some of those funds be diverted into the um, homeless program? or dealing with the homeless crisis. And then um, I was also considering and wondering, has anybody thought about contacting various build builders in the area and seeing if they could put five or 10 apartments into a 501c3 lease onto the, um, the well, Amanda Cherry Homes and what she's doing with the homeless areas and take a partial tax exempt or tax write-off for those apartments that they might donate to dealing with the homeless issue for families and individuals. And then um, that was, and then is there any reason that the um, city itself couldn't, couldn't um, put the bill for like the electric and the sewage for anything that's used regarding the homelessness as well as looking for a permanent structure, but from what I understand, the permanent structure is only for the wintertime, correct? Anyway, no, those are just some of the thoughts, and I just thought I'd come and ask them. And, and I also know that there is a lawyer named David Atkins in Eugene whose law center deals exclusively with um, 501c3, uh, 3c charitable organizations. And um, just regarding the law and the tax exemption and how to set them up and everything like that. And I was just wondering if anybody hadn't, um, well, if, if nobody's known about him, then obviously they haven't consulted him. But if that information might be useful also. That was pretty much some total of it. Uh, but if nobody's using that marijuana tax <laughs> being gained, <laughs> then I'm thinking uh, somebody needs to tap into that. <laughs> I mean, what, they're paying like 7% taxes above what we pay for cigarettes? That's like some serious tax money. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Going, going, going. All right, we're moving forward. Uh, announcements or comments by City Council? Mr. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mayor, yeah. um, I'm wondering if uh, you've had an opportunity or would appreciate a... Uh, action from commission uh, the council here to uh, do that uh, letter of support to the Newburgh Dundee bypass if, oh uh, thank you uh, yes <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I would be glad to yes 
make a motion to authorize you to sign yes. such a letter that uh, the city of Lincoln City uh, was ver is very supportive uh, of the um, efforts, financial and everything, political, to get the Newburgh-Dundee bypass completed. Uh, it's to the benefit of certainly Lincoln City and Lincoln County and, quite frankly, the entire uh, Central Coast. So, uh, I agree. Yes, I would be more than in favor of that. So I, so I make the motion. All right. I have a motion to in a second. Any discussion? I don't know what we're talking about down there. Okay. Yep. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you for the reminder. Oh, Bob. Um, okay, anyone else? See yeah. here. Yep. Yes. There's a body attached. Um, I just have a few um, things I just wanted to say that um, our neighborhood association met this weekend, and I just wanted to um, say that we had a presentation by Officer Smith, and is she still here? And I just wanted to um, give him a bit of a shout out. He's excellent, um, and he <coughs> came to our meeting muddy because he was chasing a bad guy um, and that was kind of fun for everyone not for him but the rest of us and he um, let us know he um, provided an update to our neighborhood we always ask for crime reports and and what's happening in our neighborhood and he and um, he provides a good a good summary of things and I would like to say we had nothing happening so that was wonderful um, and also he mentioned that he is moving to be the school officer which is very wonderful and congratulations to him glad to hear that too he's a great guy um, and we also had a second presenter at our neighborhood association meeting which was Joe Dana Bright she's a chief information officer for CERT and if you've been following in the news guard, maybe the, not the last couple, but she's been presenting 52 um, articles about how to be prepared um, for earthquakes and tsunamis and all that. And it's it's been wonderful. And I would just like to encourage the newspaper to start those up again. Um, she wasn't finished. <laughs> anyway, she's great. And, and another reason that I'm... Um, bringing this up um, now is that these are two really good examples of why organizing your neighborhood is important you can bring you can ask for presenters as we do and then we get current information about what is happening um, outside our little world and also inside um, so I'm just encouraging people out there in the community to consider um, organizing with your neighbors and um, and it doesn't have to be real formal. It's just a really good way to, to have a good time with your neighbors, too. So I wanted to bring that up. I have two more things. Um, one is um, also to the chief. Um, that you know that speed sign that tells people how fast they're going? And I know it's not been too long ago, but at the next opportunity th that it's convenient, could we ask you to move that to Logan Road? By the curve before the um, either before it or following it before the um, state park. Um, I know this has been spring break, and, but um, if you're walking, you're taking your life in your own hands walking around there, that corner. And also, I want to give a, a final um, anyway a big thank you to the public works, the emergency coordinator, and. Um, for the city and also our neighborhood emergency coordinator for finally erecting the tsunami evacuation um, route signs. I can put a big check mark off of something that's been bothering me for many, many years. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone else? Me. Please. No, no. Slide it out. <laughs> okay. Um, I have something that was brought to my attention and I don't know if we can do anything about it. Um, when signs are put up, there are lots and lots of regulations. If signs are changed, there's lots of regulations. 
But when a business moves and the sign remains, there's no way to enforce updating that sign. And I don't know if that's a freedom of speech change of face issue that we can't ask them to take down or cover up a business that's no longer there. I, I heard a story today of a family who came into town hungry with three little boys, I think it was, saw the beach and pizza sign. They got out of the car and there's no beach and pizza. Hasn't been in several years. Um, there's other examples of that too around town. Um, I think that we have some provision for off-premise signs and that would be a language thing. So I don't know if maybe we can um, make this correlate to that. But it's it looks trashy when there are signs to places that no longer exist. Maybe we could uh, have a meeting at the Pines and then do some karaoke. Right, <laughs> that's another one. <laughs> and they don't want to lose their sign privilege in that case, but they could cover it up. <laughs> um, and maybe make it within 90 days of the business leaving. Something has to be done to, to change it. I'd like to explore that and see what, where we can go with that. Um, the other issue I have is um, there's a League of Oregon Cities um, Region 1 Small Cities meeting on May 5th in Toledo. I'm interested in going, wondering if anybody else is interested. The um, agenda includes affordable and workforce housing. Oh. Yes, I've signed up. Me too. Okay. I'll get you signed up. Thank you. Right. Councilor Casper. Um, <clears throat> yes, um, there's still an outstanding issue um, with a, a citizen's concern, and uh, Councilor Ward might want to assume parliamentarian at this time. Um, I'm concerned about the request for records for the mayor's email from his private account regarding city business. And I understand the mayor has stated that he has nothing, however, the disclosure of personal accounts of the email indicate that he was in contact with others regarding city business on that account. I move for the council to instruct the mayor to submit all emails associated with all email accounts used for city business, including those from his subrest account to the city recorder within seven working days from today. Okay, anyone else? Um, I'm making a motion. Well, I heard that. I didn't hear a second. So okay. Second. Okay. <laughs> you guys got to say something or it dies. We got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Um, yes, I was concerned about the financial um, implications of any actions of an individual not serving on council business. And I've learned that we could individually or as a council be financially um, associated for any fees if there's any suits that move forward. And I want to be free of that burden for the city council or any individuals. And so I just wanted to be clear that, Mr. Mayor, if you do not return any emails or you refuse to, um, that's also a violation of the Oregon um, Code. It could be tampering with public rec records. So if you, um, if that's your choice, then I don't think that we should be responsible for your denial of these records. So if I can, um, maybe somebody can help me. Uh, it, it feels like your motion is asking us to be the policeman, and I'm not sure I want to be the policeman. Um, I think there's existing law and regulations on disclosure when, when asked public record. Um, it seems to me that it would be 
the responsibility of the asker to pursue legal ramifications to obtain if if they think there is uh, you know I, I don't know that that's our role of a council I'm, I'm just questioning but it doesn't feel like my role well the city has an obligation to respond to records request and a records request has been made and we are part of the body that is represented by one of the, our individual members who has um, failed to comply with this request and therefore violated our own resolution um, um, see that's where I disagree okay. that we've we've asked shared the request of that asker to all of us to share the or disclose emails so we I think our obligation is done we have notified each and every one of us to bring forth from from there I, you know I'm not going to go through and check you or the mayor or anybody else it's I think up to the asker as I said before to pursue legal ramifications we're just following through with the request for legal records council Anzor and Anderson and this person asked October 31st we were not on council the request is made three times since then so I'm just clarifying to relieve us of any financial responsibility that moves forward that we are not responsible because uh, you feel we're not the police and I feel it's our obligation to at least invite the mayor to do so any further discussion I'm at a loss for words here. Um, I don't even know if we have the authority to vote on this. We um, do. That the Department of Justice has clearly said they're not even going to move forward on it. They, they have said I'm nothing still about the, the subgrass. I still have the floor. Thank you. Um, <sighs> May I ask a question? Always oh, not finished. Um, yeah, go ahead and ask a question. Well, I was just curious if there's, um, or I mean, you don't have to answer this, of course. I'm just curious. <laughs> Is there a reason you wouldn't want to, want to get this behind us? Oh, I think this is behind us, uh, way behind us. Uh, this is uh, just another. Uh, boy, I've got to watch my tongue. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. I'll just, I'll just. Well, Mr. Mayor, my, we, my we do have council. And, uh, so, um, um, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> Any other discussion? Yes, um, there has been a person. I mean, we've already received. Uh, an in email from another person requesting for your login to the following city financial software system court management blah blah the city council insurance system um, it was requested of you to um, forward information to this person but they needed to have a letter from you on the official um, stationary or software email and the very next day, the person in charge of this government body wrote a letter to you, email, and said that this person um, wanted to send this court information but needed official email to send it to and was requesting your official city email as requested by the person who sent the first email to you at your business <coughs> residence. And this information was inadvertently sent as a public record to the DOJ. So if there's maybe there's something you have forgotten about in your records and if you don't want to submit them to the city recorder perhaps we could find a, a neutral third party um, to review them well here's all I'm going to say about this um, I have been for the last two years chased besmirched maligned I have listened to people call me evil a liar, a crook, and I've tried my best to
to just let it roll off. I've tried to uphold the dignity of this office by not responding in a, in a, in a way that I normally might have. And I'm not going to bite tonight. I will say I have an agreement with this council. I have an agreement that I read a letter and apology. The council by motion said, read this, this motion is dead. The council agreed by vote. They will not take this up again. I would consider that a violation. I'm not going to respond any further. If you want to continue to read old information, I, I can't stop you. Um, I had hoped we'd move forward. I consider it petty. I consider it mean-spirited, pointless. We've spent, I know the one fee just from the Pope investigation came to over $70,000. $70,000 for that letter. That doesn't include the attorney's time for the ethics investigation. That doesn't include the attorney's time and the, city, and the uh, chief of police's time for a DOJ investigation that council was not even aware of by our city attorney. Frankly, I think we've got bigger things to worry about. We've wasted two years of our time. If the new council wants to pick this up and keep running with it, go for it. I can't stop you. But I will say, you will not get an ounce of cooperation from me in this matter. I will not be turning over anything, no matter what you say. You want to get a warrant? Get a warrant. And then that warrant will say, hey, there's nothing here. But I'll leave it at that. So. Um, we have um, any further discussion. So, um, could we hear the motion again? The motion was to require the mayor to turn over any personal emails concerning any city related business from his personal email account. Is that a correct summation? Yes. And we have a second on that. And that, just for clarification, that was through a public information request by somebody I, no I mean is that yes. <laughs> yes it's a public information request and the, and the apology you gave to the council was on a different matter so that was entirely different this is a public request record yeah. and I'm just wanting to clarify that we are As not I responsible see. for any denial of information that you that you choose not to give out so just to clear the air I'm not going to pursue it um, I'm just don't want us to be financially responsible for things that we don't have to be Fair enough. Any further discussion? I'm just curious if, um, if I may, um, Councillor um, Casper, is, um, is there more to this? Because right now you just said that you would not want us to be financially responsible if this moves forward, which would be out of our control. But I don't know what lawsuits will follow or could. You know, I don't know what 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 the. Uh, applicant for the request would be doing but failing to comply with um, with public records is a violation of our of our own our own ordinances our own resolutions um, and if he acted as an individual outside of the council then he's in violation of our own charter so we don't we don't know I'm gonna stop the discussion here uh, perhaps you want to bring an attorney in to start giving legal opinions uh, beyond that were you satisfied with that answer well I so yes or no and we'll just get down with this discussion no this is not to belabor it I just okay. um, I just heard um, okay. Councillor Casper you repeated the motion it didn't include the um, funding element or the um, that, that, that her request is for the city not to cover any costs that are, are incurred because of any non-action. And that's the part that I would be interested in was, would be that um, 
that part. So, um, if, if I heard it correctly, there was a motion, and then that part was brought up in the discussion section. Correct? Okay. That was not part of your original motion. That I, was part of I the discussion. I can add it to my motion. That, that's my main concern. That is my main concern. Okay, you didn't add it to your motion. So if you, you want to so amend your motion, you need to amend your motion. I will it's amend my. As a discussion point. I amend my motion um, that we instruct mayor, the mayor to submit all his emails associated with email accounts used for city business, including a subrest Gmail account, which could implicate us for any financial responsibility or obligation for any suits that pursue as a result of denial of these documents. So you need another second. Or withdrawal of a second and a second to this or just let it die. Okay. Just asking. Someone's got to. Okay. I'll Co second. Councillor Hinton had. Oh. Someone needs to right. draw and their second and amend their second, or don't <laughs> let it die. And I was only, I was, I'm mainly interested in the financial responsibility of this. Um, so I'm conflicted at the moment. Well, then maybe the thing to do is to speak to an actual attorney before you make this motion. That would be my recommendation. But that's just me. I have spoken to an attorney. Like I said, I think if you are concerned. You need to speak to an attorney. I'm sorry. I need to withdraw my second. All right. Withdraw my motion. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. We've got uh, Celebrate Recovery tomorrow night, Faith Baptist Church, 6 p.m. Um, come have a hot meal. If you uh, are dealing with addictions or anything like that, we'd love to see you and help you. Um, we have Sunrise Service. Uh, the uh, Ministerial Association will be meeting at the dock on 7 a.m. Sunday the 16th for Easter service. We have our budget committee meeting Monday the 17th, 5 p.m. for the uh, Urban Renewal Agency, 6 o'clock for the city. And we have a council work session at 2.30. Look at me bang these out. Um, then we have the Oregon Coast Garage Sale starting, is that correct, on the 21st? Get in line. I am so excited about that. Maybe we'll have a little sunshine. Anyone I, else? I, yes, I do. Uh, so I have been con contacted by people who have raccoon problems, and uh, they are not sure what to do. Uh, apparently, it's illegal to trap them or relocate them or anything like that, so I would like to know what particularly we have in our ordinances that can or cannot do anything with raccoons. And apparently, if if a raccoon is trapped, it caught, it, the a parent charges $75 per removal. I don't know what happens to it after that, but it's a concern of some that have contacted me. So if we can get information on that. Uh, um, additionally, to that real quick, because we heard from the our attorney about that, that it, they can be trapped, but if they are trapped, they have to be removed from the county and euthanized. So you can trap them, but you got to take them out and kill them. All right, cool. Yeah. Uh, second thing is on the website for the Lincoln City Eclipse website. Um, I see links for uh, viewing, parking, and glasses. Um, I know before we said that we were not going to sell glasses ourselves, but then uh, the link, what would the link be any different than if we're just going to give one link for one particular manufacturer of glasses? Uh, additionally, the links don't work for the viewing and parking, so just uh, a possible update for that and the time that we might have some information on that. Um, also, the language for safety, um, f as far as looking directly at it, you know, it's not safe to look at it. I think some other sites say you will go blind if you look at it, so I don't know if it's as strong a language as possible to really indicate how dangerous it is to uh, look directly at it, and aside from exactly in the totality. So that it? those are some concerns of mine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? With that, may God bless you all. May God bless Lincoln City. We are adjourned. Did you bring me a blue pen?
Mics are off.